All right, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is day 877 of my Joshua Tree Growing Series, my longest standing plant growing series. And I have a green plant hopper hiding amidst the foliage. At first I was thinking, why did a piece of Joshua Tree leaf, these very tough sword-like blades, just break off and fall in there? And you can see some of those other uh, sow thistle seeds in there that blew around. So it's day 881. And again, this green plant hopper won't leave. I've moved this pot up, as I'll show you later. I rearranged everything. I wanted to get this plant off the balcony floor because it doesn't get that much sunlight, especially with everything on this table, which I didn't always have before, and the passion fruit vine. All the sunlight just gets soaked up before it really hits the floor of the balcony. So I don't want this to continue to get only one to two hours of afternoon, mid-afternoon sunlight a day. That's not nearly enough for something that's accustomed to full sun in the high desert. It grows in the valleys. So at 4,000 plus feet elevation, it's just growing on flat ground. It gets a lot of hours of sunlight a day. So this is my setup. I refinished my table and Unfortunately, that beautiful red finish, the wood stain, just uh, rubs off from all the activity I do, all the wiping and the water that keeps landing on there. It's very corrosive to whatever I put on top. So that plant hopper is still there. It's a minor nuisance, but I'm wondering if pests such as these are responsible for what I'll show you later, which are these warty little growths that are becoming ever so common. So on day 883, um, this is the state of my Joshua tree at this point. I was still fertilizing with a squirt bottle. I was no longer scooping just heaps and heaps of blue crystalline miracle grow all over the soil surface and crushing vitamins and whatnot. I went easy on this for a while because I figured nutrition wasn't really the limiting factor here. So this blade has a rip there, a tear. I don't know how that happened. Maybe it was just some damage that I caused very early on by snagging onto it with my clothes or my uh, fingers or forearms or whatnot. And sometimes uh, these plants can draw a little blood, but I've declawed this cat, as you saw in a previous episode. I took a pair of trimmers and clipped off all the spiky ends. So that's no longer a problem because this plant was really causing me a lot of problems causing me a lot of pain really so I don't fertilize all that much these days uh, not with the Joshua tree at least I just want to give it full sun and hope all these uh, warty growths on the bottom blades uh, just go away after a while or well they won't go away it's just I don't want that to happen to all the new leaves I'll give you a closer up look later on but so far everything's looking good I don't know if this would continue to look good if I had it on the balcony floor probably not it wasn't getting nearly enough sunlight and even now i would say you know maybe it's not getting enough sunlight so if you look at those uh, blades in the middle that are coming out they're pretty short you know they're slightly above half length so as you can see here i've watered and at the very bottom it looks like it's more narrow the funnel and those leaves have long died. Those are where I trimmed back or just pulled them off after they died, the, the blades. So there are a lot of low-lying blades that are dying. That's a continuous phenomenon you'll see with Joshua trees in the wild. They just keep losing leaves and losing leaves. So it's day 925. And I decided, along with many other plants, that I'm going to add some real Southern California dirt to the top. So a lot of crops are grown in Southern California. Well, California in general, and the soil is fairly rich. There aren't any orchards like right nearby, but you know, within a 10 or 20 mile radius, plenty. So this is on 5X fast forward. Don't want to bore you, but these uh, chunks of very fine dirt are sometimes reminiscent of pebbles. That's why I'm doing all this a feeling between my fingertips to kind of break up these clumps of dirt and there are also a lot of small pebbles in there which I throw out I don't like that and that would just get in the way and inhibit plant growth so it's a fair bit of just fine sifting manually I do have a sieve on my balcony floor I haven't used it for this that would stir up a lot of dust and I'd recommend if you're working with this kind of very dry soil 
which I got a bag of, you know, maybe it's just five pounds or so from the outside. Uh, I dug it out with a trowel. It's uh, very heavy, it's very dense. I'm sure it's very nutrient rich and it's got seeds of all sorts of things. But as you can see, just by watering here, there's all this dust being kicked up. So I'd recommend wearing safety glasses that wrap around just so you don't get that in your eyes, especially if you have contact lenses or whatnot. You don't want that to uh, dirty your lenses. So just uh, go ahead and shower off the edges of this pot, which is something I'll have to do later. It seems like there's a little bit of splash, but that's okay. It doesn't seem to get anywhere else. It's uh, remarkably self-contained after you water. Everything sort of congeals. It's very fine dirt. And I have seen some comments before on my previous Joshua Tree videos to the effect of you should be planting this in sand. Well, those people just don't understand that this doesn't grow in sand. Nothing grows in pure sand. Not here, not in the high desert or interior deserts, not in Arizona or the Sahara Desert. Basically, it grows in a fine desert soil like this or something very similar to this. It's actually very rich of these semi-desert or semi-arid soils. So as you can see, the drainage is very slow for such a thin layer. And even on 5x fast forward, it's barely going in there. So it forms a great seal. I've already done this with my other plants. Well, my passion fruit plant has a full seal. This one does too. I didn't dig up enough dirt to provide a full seal for some of my other plants, but that's okay. If we're just dealing with seedlings, I only need to have the a seal or real dirt be around the base of the stem for nascent plants. And you can see some of my other pots. I have a lemon seedling, a pineapple tops and whatnot. So it's day 933. I gave Josh a haircut. So it's lost a little bit of mass, this Joshua tree. But as you can see, the older blades were very unsightly. They had all these warty growths. So I decided to trim the very low-lying ones, regardless of whether the plant's doing well. It's going to lose those low-lying blades. And they'll keep folding back and forming a, a dead beard of foliage, as they do in the wild. So most of the time it takes a really long time for the trunk to get exposed. So there hasn't been that much growth in the center. Well, the blades are nearly full length, so there's that. But the, the number of leaves coming out from that funnel in the center is not impressive lately. I think that's because of the maybe month or six week or two week, uh, two month period where this was on the balcony floor. I didn't have enough space. I wasn't staggering these pots on the balcony floor. So as you can see there, tons of warty growths. I don't like that. It looks a lot better like this. And it's trimmed back so it looks like it has more of a trunk but honestly there hasn't been that much development since the last episode. But I think by placing this close to the balcony rail on top of the table, it has a much better position to receive much more sun every day. So instead of say one, one and a half hours it can get at least four or five, I think. So as you can see here, this wild dirt, it forms a very good seal. It's very easy to gauge the hydration of the pot and moss is growing. At least I think that's moss, if not some kind of algae. Uh, blades of wild grass are growing in some of my pots as well. So I wouldn't be surprised to get mushrooms and some other things growing in there. As long as they're not giant weeds, like the so thistle, my century plant, I don't really care. I could always pull stuff when it gets too big and it starts being a drain on the resources of the pot. And hopefully I'll just do that um, when they're very small. So I don't want anything to get like the so thistle of my century pot plant um, from that series that I just ended where it just grows to a huge size within a month or two. So as you can see here, the drainage is very slow and that's great. It has a beautiful reflection. That means it's trapping all the hydration underneath. The potting mix is very hygroscopic. So it also means that fungus gnats will have a hard time burrowing in and out. I'm sure the ants won't have a problem though. So it's very interesting to have this reflection. I think it gives my pots a much better aesthetic. And I hope the microbes from the wild 
and the fungi and whatnot will seed the potting mix underneath, which was once sterilized, but this has gone on for a really long time. So if anything, I'm sure the pot, the potting mix inside it was all full of microbes anyway. Uh, probably more moles and mosses than anything else. Probably not a lot of bacteria. I'm going to go out in the wild and get more bags of dirt and hopefully that will trigger a renaissance in my plant growing and much better progress in the future. Thanks for watching and please stay tuned.